Joined January 2009. We went to Afghanistan. It was November of 2010 to June 2011. Uh, as soon as we got back from that, um, I had already volunteered to go to Okinawa, Japan. We got to Okinawa and running became a large part of my routine. Right before I got sick, I was at the point where on a Sunday I could go out for 15 miles and run up to uh, Nago City and back. We're not sure what made me sick, but it started with a cough. It got to the point where I was coughing so much that I couldn't do PT anymore. I got the attention of my uh, platoon commander and our doc, and uh, they said, look, we gotta get you out of here. I woke up um, here in Iowa. It was May 5th that I woke up. On March 13th, I got the worst phone call anybody would hope to get. He said that Michael was um, on critical condition on a vent in Okinawa, Japan, and that the doctor has said that me and his father need to come to bedside. Being a nurse, um, I knew what the vent settings meant. We were told that um, we were maxing out on the vent. We were gonna lose Michael if we did not get off the island. So the next step when the vent no longer does it is ECMO. They very quickly decided, okay, let's go. So Dr. Yoon got the plane to Hawaii, loaded up the team, came back. The whole medical team, there was 25 of them, did a complete assessment decided it was safer to put him on ECMO before we did the transfer. It was a 10-hour flight. We did not feel that Michael would survive the whole 10 hours. Huge C-17 plane, never seen a plane that big before. We spent a week in Hawaii and Michael got sicker. We learned only 35 places in the world offer adult ECMO. So we are going to the next level. The Marine Corps is in charge, they own Michael, so they said, let's go to the University of Iowa. We're like, absolutely, let's go where we need to go. When he arrived here, the, the initial issues had to do with the bleeding in the chest that was related to the chest tubes, um, his renal insufficiency or kidney support that was needed, and then the ongoing lung support which ECMO was facilitating. For Corporal Meyer's case, at age 23 or 24, somebody who was healthy before suddenly got ill, and then now it's been 12 days on the ventilator, well, that patient is worthwhile offering a chance. So ECMO, ECMO, it stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. Those four words together essentially refer to the artificial lung that's used uh, to mimic the native lung function, which essentially puts oxygen into the bloodstream and gets rid of carbon dioxide from the bloodstream exactly as our own lungs do. There are really not a lot of centers that offer adult ECMO. And the reason is, is because it's technically challenging. The, the technology is both expensive and not commonly used outside of the operating room. Um, but then I think more importantly is success relies upon having, having a well-trained team of people, which is a handful of physicians as champions, but really the, the, the core people doing the majority of the work are the bedside care providers, which are nurses, respiratory therapists, people with special understandings of the technology. The people we've met in Iowa have been phenomenal. Everybody has been so kind to us. University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics stands for the very best in medical care and people with passion for you, for your family. It's not just a job. Care comes from the heart here. We've got all the personality back, thank you. We, <laughs> we, we got Michael back completely. It's been great. I, I would definitely come back here and uh, have my family members or, or my future children come back here in a heartbeat.